Do you know the one thing that all beginner video editors have in common? We basically all start out making videos that aren't that great. And that's totally fine. The best way to learn video editing is to jump in head first. So if you make a few bad videos to start out, that's so much better than not making videos. Take it from me, a former bad video editor. That being said, there are some common pitfalls that we can all try to avoid even if you're just getting started. So in today's video, I'm gonna take you through a list of the most common video editing mistakes that beginners make, and I'm gonna let you know how you can fix them. Once again, I know these mistakes because I myself was guilty of making them. Let's go ahead and jump in. Let's start with the most common mistake I see new video editors make and even experienced video editors make, and that is not properly organizing your files. Even I'm guilty of this from time to time, I will admit. But being organized with how you name your files and store your files is gonna save you so much time in the long run. I only realized how important this was when I was working on a bigger project that had a ton of video files and every time I needed to add a new clip to the timeline, I would spend so much time searching through all of the video clips to find the one I was looking for when I could have just gone and named them in the first place and that would have saved me so much time. A common way to name your files is first by putting the date. It's especially important to put the date if you're shooting a project that takes you a long period of time. If you shot all of your footage on one day, then you might not need to put the date. And in that case, what I usually do is just name the files with a number starting with 01 010304 and that way your footage will stay in the order that you shot it. And then after either the date or the number, put a short description of what's happening in the video, enough that you'll be able to look at the title and remember what shot it was. And then I like to create a master folder and then inside that folder I have separate folders for images, videos, music, voiceovers and special effects. And then I go ahead and add the files which I already renamed to the folders that they belong in and that's going to make it so much easier for me to find what I'm looking for while I'm editing. This the second mistake a lot of beginners make is jumping into the edit without having a workflow. Basically what I mean by this is if you're jumping back and forth between adding clips to the timeline, then working on the audio, then adding sound effects, then adding b-roll, then back to trimming clips, you're going to waste a lot of time. It's a lot more efficient to do all of the trimming and then all of the b-roll or to have some kind of system in place like that that works for you. So the process I usually follow, first I go through my script and I mark all the points where I'm going to need graphics, where I'm going to need b-roll, where I'm going to need text, maybe sound effects and different things like that. I'll mark that on the script and then I'll go ahead and arrange and trim all my video clips so that they match the script. And then I have a pretty good idea of where everything needs to go. So next I'll go through and add B-roll, then I'll do text and then graphics. And then the final step for me is usually adding the music track. You don't have to edit in that exact same sequence, but I do recommend the first thing you do is go through and trim and arrange all of your clips. And from there, you might wanna jump to color grading, you might wanna jump to B-roll, whatever works for you. But you do wanna have a plan of what sequence you wanna edit in. It's just gonna make things a lot easier. The third mistake is letting clips run for too long. There are certain times when you're gonna to wanna to have a really long clip, but in general, you want your edits to be as concise as possible. So basically, with every clip, you're looking for the latest point that you can jump into that clip and the earliest point that you can jump out. Even in a talking video like this, if I let this clip go on for even just a second longer than it needs to, it feels like it drags. A lot of editors on YouTube will use the five to seven second rule. So basically every five to seven seconds, the visual on screen changes either by adding B-roll or switching to another camera angle or even by adding text. You can even see that rule play out if you go back and watch this video from the beginning or if you watch some of the other videos on our channel. It's a great way to keep your video from being too monotonous and a few of the ways that you can achieve this is by cutting to a different camera angle or even just zooming in the clip or if you only shot with one camera you can even just crop in the clip. You can also add b-roll, text, or graphics. The fourth mistake is having too many jump cuts in your video. A simple cut is the most common transition and it is the transition that you wanna use most often, but jump cuts become a bit of a problem when your subject moves just slightly so that there's just that little jump in between frames. Now it is a good idea to remove pauses in your sentences. So that's why jump cuts show up so often in videos. So here are some ways you can avoid them. 
First, you can have a two camera setup. Then when you're cutting out pauses in between your talking, you can try switching to the other angle for the next shot. Whenever you're using two cameras, be sure to use the 30 degree rule, which basically means that between camera one and camera two, there should be a 30 degree difference. That's gonna be different enough, so switching between the two cameras won't look jumpy. If you only have access to one camera, then what you can do is zoom in some of the clips so that they don't look like the exact same clip, or you can always cover up jump cuts with B-roll. The fifth mistake is not cutting on action. Now this is a big one. Cutting on action is a small thing that's gonna make a really big difference in your videos. So let's say you took a video of someone playing guitar and you took that video from two different angles. You want to find an action in that video that you can cut on. So even something really small like strumming the guitar. And then basically what you wanna do is cut the first video right in the middle of the strum, basically where you see the most motion blur. And then the second angle is gonna pick up right in the middle of the action. Here's what that looks like if we don't cut on action. As you can see when we cut on action, it just feels like so much more of a natural edit. You can even do this with talking head videos where you have two different camera angles by cutting on the action of your hands or something like that. Don't underestimate this one. It really goes a long way, like I said before. Number six is overusing transitions and filters. This is a classic one. Most video editing softwares offer a ton of transitions and a lot of them seem just so much fun to put into your videos. So a lot of beginners will add a lot of transitions to kind of stylize their video and make it their own, but it actually ends up making your video look a little bit amateur. And the same goes for filters like firework filters and stuff like that. Of course, there are certain types of videos, maybe music videos or maybe sci-fi dream sequences where it does make sense to add filters to really stylize the video. But in general, you wanna keep it to a minimum. And when it comes to transitions between one shot to the next, nine times out of 10, a simple cut is all you need. Every now and then a cross dissolve, and then every now and then something more fun like a whip or light leaks or something like that. The seventh mistake is not paying enough attention to the audio of your video. Most beginners focus a lot more on the visual elements of the videos, but the audio is a lot more important than you realize. People are actually more likely to click off of your video because of bad audio than they are for bad video quality. First, it's really common to have these really jarring sounding audio cuts when you cut from one clip to the next. And that's just because you filmed the two clips in different environments that had different sounds happening. One way to avoid this is by using L cuts and J cuts. So in this example, you're just gonna pull the first video so that it plays for a little while underneath the second video, and then you'll have the audio just fade out underneath. So that's gonna be a lot less of a jarring cut. Have a listen to how it sounds now. You also wanna think a lot about the music that you're picking out for your video. You wanna make sure that the music fits the mood you're going for. So for a tutorial like this, it wouldn't make sense to use a really sad music track or a really epic soundtrack sounding music track. Instead, it makes sense to have just kind of a happy, upbeat track. So you might find that this is a little bit time consuming, but you do really wanna take time to listen to a lot of different music tracks and pick out the right one for your video. If you don't know what kind of music track you want, a hack that you can use is to think about popular songs that you really like, and think about which one you would put in your video. And then even though you won't be able to use that exact song because you probably won't be able to get the copyrights for it, when you're listening to stock music tracks, you can listen for one that sounds similar enough to the song that you had in mind. Also, to help you out with this, we have a video on our channel about the top eight websites where you can find free stock music. Once you've picked out your music track, the next thing you wanna focus on is balancing the levels of music with the levels of the talking or the sound effects or whatever other audio you have. If you're creating a talking video like this one, you wanna make sure that the music isn't competing with you, so you need it to be quiet enough where you can really hear your voice clearly, but loud enough where the music adds a nice vibe to the video. And the last component to perfecting your audio experience is adding sound effects. Sound effects really go a long way in making your video more engaging, so I highly recommend that you experiment with them. If a car drives by, you can find a sound effect on the internet of a car driving by and sync it up with your video. If you're typing, add a typing sound effect. Even if you're doing a talking head video like this one, you can still find opportunities to throw in sound effects, like my favorite, adding a pop sound effect when text pops up on the screen. And that brings us to the last mistake on our list, which is inconsistent graphics. A lot of new editors will add text and graphics that are all over the place in terms of font, size, color, and just overall look. That's really gonna end up being pretty distracting and just kind of make your video look casual. So to avoid that, just pick out one font, 
one color, one size, and stick to it throughout the video. You might need to change the size a little bit depending on how long that piece of text is, but try to keep it relatively consistent. I usually just copy and paste my text to make it so much easier. Basically, this one is just about remembering that less is more. That's gonna keep your videos clean and easy to understand. And there you have it. Those were the eight most common mistakes that we see new video editors make. Which one of these mistakes have you been guilty of making? When I was a new video editor, I would say I was most guilty of number number one and number five. If you're looking for more video editing tips, be sure to check out this video. I'm Teresa with NVIDIO and I will see you in the next one.